Hello everyone, welcome to the Base Materials Project, Channel News. Alright, so we're getting on, it's February, uh, February 4th, UK time, coming on quarter to three in the afternoon UK time, just outside the city of London, it's the Base Materials Project. Alright, so we're checking out... Uh, the usual C++ ASAP, the alignment for door workstation 35 and we're back it up uh, with web development we're still uh, waiting on it and uh, in the meantime as well we're doing a bit of Adobe Creative Cloud using the Adobe Suite uh, to improve the web uh, and the website so yeah we dropped off a bit due to season but it looks like things are picking up again uh, today looks like uh, Amazon group, its share price went up by about 148 billion US dollars or something like that. Something insane, but to put that in perspective, it's quite possible that this money that's been lost in Bitcoin and crypto in the stock market these past 10 days or so, it's quite possible that's it kind of it's, it's found its way into the Amazon share price or so for safety. What have you? Like people don't think it's going to go bust anytime soon. Uh, that being said, uh, here at the Basic Materials Project, of course, uh, we like to help entrepreneurs, uh, musicians, artists, and businesses put out material. Uh, get in touch via the website, of course, uh, and audio books as well. Like we're doing all right out of audio books in a minute. So if you've got projects that are very long like from like say 7 hours to 11 hours long we can put them through the analogue channel strip alright that bad boy there oh, onto the solid state recorder ok so another thing we're going to bring up is power, clean power supplies so basically we've lost a bit of an audio interface and I think we've got PC we identified the source of the fault uh, basically which is a faulty power supply unit inside of the PC and it's got a, an earth leak I think that's damaged the audio interface that's it being plugged into it uh, it's probably to do with uh, the fact that you know I'm not taking my own device here really she'll start out with a clean power supply uh, we'll put one up on screen and put in we'll edit in and post so it's one of them that can knock you back so now we obviously return to mobile phone an arms free kit, we're using just a plain old gaming headset uh, today but we're gonna, once we finish with the video we're going to use Adobe Premiere Pro and run that through first uh, so yeah we've demonstrated on the channel uh, of course uh, Litecoin mining using uh, Linux Fedora Workstation 35 uh, there's still a bit I don't know if it's you know, we're advised that it's not worth it anymore or anything like that, but it's, it's one of them. If you want to know how, how it's done, how it works. We also looked at some of the Dogecoin source code from GitHub, and uh, we looked at how software, how software is made in teams over the web using Git or Git G as well to graphically represent it. So uh, we'll need to get it in a bit more user-friendly format, and uh, especially need to get the uh, command line back, command line reference basically because on Linux it's tough, difficult uh, we left that project, went on to a Windows Server 2022 evaluation edition just to have a go have a look at some of the concepts uh, and uh, yeah All right, so here we are I guess uh, we might give the Bitcoin Litecoin miner a second chance oh yeah before I forget as well uh, the Litecoin wallet as well so we put it all together on the box basically so been uh, big moves in Bitcoin and crypto at the minute. It seems that it's like it seems like the open source version of the economy. Like uh, I suppose online trading. When you when you look at it, it, you know you look at it like that. How the global economy, e-commerce, has come to this level. Uh, you could even say that. Uh, Amazon, it's all the traditional shop method, like, even that's probably, like, 
say like internet 2.0 or whatever they're talking about, an internet 3.0, the internet of crypto and NFTs uh, and all that, Bitcoin, blockchain uh, and the rest of it. But uh, here, at the, here at the Best Materials Project, we, we, we want to advance our knowledge, so it's best about self-development. So, yeah, we used the Litecoin miner to log on to the Litecoin pool and we got little bits of work and we earned some small amount of reward. Uh, we didn't get it up enough so we could actually get it to our Litecoin wallet. So we might demonstrate that by sending Litecoin to the wallet. Like just to show that, you know, that we can side by side. So you get to see how it's done. Obviously all of this is taken care of. If you're a customer of Coinbase or uh, Binance or Kraken. Uh, there's a bunch of them, uh, really. Uh, and, it, and it works the same way like foreign exchange does uh, on the back end. Lot, lots of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and uh, underlying blockchain databases. Obviously, when we're dealing with the web, we're dealing with SQL type databases or so any SQL variant, whether it's a Microsoft version, uh, an open source version, or what have you. Generally speaking, but the blockchain can't, doesn't work like that, uh, basically. Uh, so. I don't actually think taking a shot at, say, for example, a new project, the best bet, I'd say, would be on Algorand. It's in PHP, and uh, you can drag and drop that into your web, onto your web server. You can hit that remotely via your web browser, for example. Probably needs compiling into an Apache module. I don't know if it'd be the same on, on a Windows platform, a bit... Uh, internet information services with visual studio and it'd be obviously be on a windows server of course an expensive costly option i don't actually think there's any uh blockchains do you know, like a click to deploy blockchain tech that you could drop as a, a server side include or a cdi script or php uh, i'm not really sure how it, how it all works basically for my like limited experience on the blockchain it's kind of like the opposite of c plus plus where you lock everything down on c plus plus basically so it's completely only locked down uh it's the opposite so obviously in c plus plus data and variables etc they're locked down like and access is controlled but that same data and that information on the blockchain is made publicly available so the variable it's a many located variable, so it's a variable. The blockchain is a variable that's located in many locations. And to keep that variable up to date, you need many blockchains and uh, many uh, participants. So it's basically a mathematical model in a sense that's a bit different. So on the blockchain, there's lots of different blockchain, uh, you know, whatever, blockchains where the, the transactions occur. So obviously in a database, an SQL database, you can delete the database, for example. You can't delete the blockchain because there's lots of copies of it. On an SQL, for example, you can stop people from accessing that data and that database. There's all sorts of uh, general data protection regulations, at least here in the UK, the GDPR regulation. Uh, so... I don't know where you want to go, you want to take it to the mathematics or you want to take it to the philosophy or you want to take it to the legal underpinnings or if you want to look at, we try to just compare the technology. So, you know, the global economy is basically run on Microsoft server with SQL, you know, like the traditional stock market. So when people are day trading, they're buying and selling stock from the NASDAQ or whatever stock exchanges and also when they're buying and selling foreign exchange, as well, like different types of international currencies where that's holding them for a profit or what have you. It's a different scenario, the blockchain, because the blockchain is a bit of a, like the Wild West sort of scenario where nobody in particular is responsible for the blockchain. Like, there's lots and lots of copies of it. Right? And so it's a whole entire different philosophy, really, and it's a whole entire different architecture. Basically, there's, you know, there's all sorts of history that's gone into it, uh, uh, for example. But, so there's, you know, there's that conflict. But, 
You know, uh, I still hold on to my theory of not the blockchain is a bet on a software development company. We're actually legally and lawfully going to the trouble of building a software company and being legally registered and stuff like that and have employers and stuff like that. You know, like, it's, I don't know, obviously there's a lot of investment in it. It's certainly got everybody's attention. And it's, and all these NFTs as well. I don't, I don't even I don't even get that, really. To me, it looks just like some football cards or some collector cards or something like that. They can prove legal ownership. So they're challenging, basically. They, they said it's the biggest wealth dislocation in history, but it's challenging the very software model that underpins the global economy, basically, whether it's fiat currencies. Because, you know, just... Ah... Uh, I don't know. I don't really know of anybody that is running on open source, really. Like, like apart from you know a certain few key areas, and it's taking away the market share from Microsoft and Apple uh, and Google and stuff like that. So it's one of them. If people want to accept Bitcoin as currency, it's far easier because basically anybody on the planet, anybody on the planet can. If you refer back to the bills build Dogecoin from source, or you refer back to the crypto mining with Litecoin, basically anybody on the planet, you can do it with Dogecoin, you can do it with Bitcoin, like I'd like to demonstrate, it's relatively simple, it's the same, really, uh, and anybody on the planet can now have a Bitcoin wallet and start receiving Bitcoin from it, or Dogecoin, for example, or Ethereum, so it's a no identity bank account, if it's, if it, so... You know, they, they reckon statistically half the planet doesn't have access, access to finance and banks and stuff like that in the traditional model. And, like, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Like, so, I think it's kind of one of those things, like, it, it could do with being regulated, definitely. Like, because it's real money, basically, if, you know, if you perceive it as real money, but... It's like all the nuances of the global economy. It's like you can't embargo it. Basically, you can't stop crypto getting through. So that means that nations that you know because of international politics, basically, and, and the conflict of nation states really, and the conflict of currencies as well. Because you know they have all sorts of economic embargoes that can happen. All sorts of stuff like that is a, that is in effect that probably most people outside of politics. Even your most well-informed people probably aren't aware of like that all this sort of crazy stuff is going on in the background. And of course, apart from a hacker, bank accounts can be seized. Basically, we've seen it in uh, Greece, didn't we? Like a while back, they had an economic crisis where the banks just took X amount of euros or whatever out of everybody's bank account. It happened in America in the 30s, right? So it's been known to, to occur. So independent capitalists, like, obviously, it's like one of them, are they above governments? So we like we can, like, say, like, cast aspersions at governments for all, all the things that they're up to. But are these international capitalists bigger than governments? Like, because if you look at the uh, fiat currency kings of the world, like, it's like the S&P 500, the Russell 2000 index, the Nasdaq, uh, Obviously, London, massive, right? Well, you could say that, like, eventually, all this, all of this will be on fiat currency. Like, like, it won't be on, you know. So it's going to be a nationless sort of thing, in it, crypto, what have you, like, like, because if people. Like, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about the blockchain and the rest of it's all about how it, everything's got to be on the blockchain and, and the rest of it, but people don't really understand what it is. Like, so, and there's a heck of a lot of money moving around in the global economies. It's just that, you know, we deal with polit big political issues like global warming or pollution or poverty or indebtedness uh, and, and all these people living below the poverty line and stuff like that. They reckon that Bitcoin... I mean, the wealth creation that Bitcoin could occur. So, basically, people perceive, in their perceptions, they perceive crypto, like crypto anarchy, 
basically like that you know like the future will be a crypto anarchy or something like that so all the perceived evils of of fiat currency and and, and all that you know it's a bit of a phone in this old tide like you know it's a bit of a heated political arena really but the idea is anybody on the planet basically can move move can own property number one so obviously we've heard the opinion that crypto is the apex property of the human species it's the ultimate property right there's all sorts of fearing theorems all sorts of hypothetics going on about it and that anybody all you need is a bitcoin wallet which basically costs nothing or as close to nothing as possible and all, all and because the cost of it is spread out amongst every participant in the blockchain like the fiscal costs or what have you rather than paying a charge on your bank account so the business model it's like uh it's, it's one of them but yeah some people think that crypto itself is just another you know another ponzi scheme or just another scam like but new 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 stuff comes to light don't it? there's always new a new business idea a new company or a new technology right and you have the in you know in the mainstream you have the quarterly quarterly release cycle don't you so businesses generally speaking post their results every three months so so just in case you didn't know that so basically you're expected to write your accounts every three months have a good assessment of where you are at that time uh and so they're on that release cycle, like so you know, you can expect something to happen economically or whatever every three every three months. And depending on like earnings, like what is money? Like nobody's really got to the bottom of what mo- money is and this whole Bitcoin cryptography sort of thing can take take you to the more refined areas of philosophy and, and the theory of cash itself, like the idea of it and the concept of it all. What's the issue? It's big in human civilization, like the cash, right? And so it's very, it's a very, very, it's a very odd sort of thing, really. It's, it's very strange. But that being said, cryptocurrency, the I would say privileged interest groups basically have ambushed crypto anyway. You know, it's just, it's just one of those bizarre phenomena is like you know like it's just you know it's just another computer type phenomena like but privileged in- interest groups definitely ambush the hell out of crypto and there's some part of billions that they've earned anyway in other places for example obviously if you're not an american in the american si- system maybe you know there's all that oil wars going on as well about the oil dollar and whether you know bitcoin will replace the oil dollar who's the world's oil currency and that that they'll be buying and selling oil and all that stuff on crypto like the thing is this technologically it doesn't it doesn't suit uh basically command and control like so it's cyber sort of crypto chaos that's sort of like or 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 as a price point it samples chaos in and around that area, if you know what I mean, because, like, nobody's in control of it, and basically anybody, anywhere, at any time, who knows about how to download and install Litecoin, or Litecoin Miner, or Dogecoin, you know, install Dogecoin from source, or, you know, has access to electricity, so... People... The everyday civilian, like especially here in London at the minute, here in London, the big the big news of today is all the hundreds of pounds that are going on everybody's energy bills. But these people, they're nowhere near taking as much money as server farms, for example, like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google probably consume half the planet's electricity. Really, like people don't really know about the internet and how it works and the rest of it. Like they don't get it, or they've not done any studying, like they've not researched it a bit, you know. Went to class and uh, did some, uh, you know, spent a few hours with the nose in the books, like finding all about it. Like, so 
you know, it needs it costs electricity to run. Like, you know, you know, in the server farms where all the banks, all the schools, all the educational, uh, all the manufacturers, etc. Everybody basically on the planet basically is inside of computers. Like and the individual citizen at home is kind of bearing the brunt of that. Like I think because that's what this energy price hike is that's going on. Like because they're not really most. If everybody on the planet, yeah, if all eight billion people on the planet started mining crypto, like then that would actually be a new world. It'd be a new world order. It just wouldn't be a top-down command and control economy. You see, so they're like. And that's like what basic the fact of the matter is, yeah, that you've got historic wealth, yeah, that's been managing wealth in some instances for a long time, like old old money, yeah. And the crypto people say that, oh well, why don't old money doesn't want new money to succeed? And that all of these everything, the stock market, the interest rate, bank rate, uh, tax, insurance, prices of electronics and all commodities and that there's no there's no, there's no more reason now for these command and control systems. Do you know like the ultimate fantasy of making everybody on the one system? Like Bitcoin and crypto and NFTs. If eight billion people on the planet got on that, it it would it definitely be it be it it definitely be very it. You know, it's one of those things because it. If you look at the present, you know, it's all about G8, was it G8 Summit, the Davos Group, G8, uh, and all that, like all those types that, they're the kings of the international banks, and they're the kings of the international economy, and stuff like that, and they can grow economies, or they can shrink economies, depending on what kind of policy they superimpose, whether they got quantitative easing, asset taper, uh, control of the interest rates, the control of bank rate. So all these command and control structures, yeah, that using this uh, region of interrogation can dictate how any particular economy, even that of the individual person, can grow and develop it in a command and control system, yeah, in a cybernetic command and control system, yeah. And that's kind of like going up against the other way of thinking, and it and this is it's beyond capitalism versus communism, and it's and all that, yeah. It's chaos. Like, it's cryptography, cyber cryptography chaos. Like, so, and it's almost mythical. You could you could describe it in a mythical sort of manner. You know, you can go back to the ancient Egyptians or whatever, where Set, I think it was the god Set versus the god Tehuti, where one god is the god of order and the other god is the god of chaos. Like, if you know what I mean. Like... So like fiat currency and the government and countries and nations and the rest of it, yeah. In short, versus crypto crypto people in, in the crypto what universe, like in the crypto sphere. Like like that. We're seeing it we're seeing an emergence of two political bodies, basically. And it's based around these two these two basically these two fundamental approaches to architecture. Like, whereas, you know, obviously, you know, you know, basically, crypto uh, versus fiat, basically. I don't know how the world will fracture according to it, but, you know, the power that ev- that all these nations have, like, like for example, it, the very concept of national power and that, it's being challenged by it, like, in the political arena and, you know, just you know, all you got to do is look at the world around you, really. Uh, right, we'll take a short break. We're going to be back after this advert. Thank you kindly for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe so I'll get to a thousand subscribers so we can stream. All right, we'll return, return after this break.